Welcome to the Manx Theatre Podcast. Come on to the theatre. Hello and welcome to episode 24 of the Manx Theatre Podcast with me, Neil Callan. And me, Neil King. Thank you to everyone who's listened to our previous episodes. If you're brand new to the podcast, welcome along and thanks for joining us. In this podcast, we like to try and keep you up to date with what's going on in theatre on the Isle of Man and chat to the cast and the creators of upcoming shows to find out a little bit more about the shows and the people behind them. You can still listen to all of our previous episodes through all the usual podcast outlets and at manxradio.com forward slash podcasts. While you're there, make sure to subscribe, give us a like, rate and leave a little review and share with all your friends. You can also keep up to date with what's going on by following Manx Theatre Podcast on Facebook and Instagram and at Manx Theatre Pod on Twitter. So, Beautiful. here we are, episode 24, and 24. this weekend it's our second birthday. Happy birthday to you. Who'd have thought we'd made it to two years? Wow, well, did you bring any cake or what's um, going on? I did have some cake, but I kind of ate it on the way. Oh, back. fair enough. Sorry about that. Well, the, the thought was there, wasn't it? The yeah. thought was there. So, Neil, then... This was your idea initially. Mm. Did you think, way back two years ago, when you interviewed me for episode number one, that you would still be here two years later? No way. It was a it was a drunken idea uh, with my uh, my friend Alex Mazotta. Yeah, we did. We picked you for the first one because we knew you and didn't want to inter- uh, interview any strangers. <laughs> and we did Jack Verity as well from uh, was he the Russian players? Yeah. And yeah, came out well. Episode twenty four. Two years down the line, amazing. It's going well, isn't it? It is. It is. Well, hopefully, then we'll have we'll have many more to keep going. Yeah. Forward. Hi, this is Neil. Before we go any further, I've just heard a big realization that we got so excited and carried away with the joy of our second birthday that we got one episode ahead of ourselves. And in several places in this episode, we'll refer to it as episode twenty-four, when actually it's twenty-three. Never mind. Anyway, back to the podcast. Right, well, coming up on this week's podcast then, I spoke to Michelle Kane and Tim Keyes from the Peel Looney Pants about their upcoming debut production of Cinder's The Adult Panto. But first, joining us in the studio today are Michelle James and Chloe Shimon of Hello Little People. Ladies, welcome to the podcast. Hello. Hello. Thank you for coming for, to our birthday party. It's <laughs> yeah, amazing, isn't it? Well, yeah. There we are. There we go. I had someone sang it eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's, it's welcome back to the podcast, isn't it? Because yes. the pair of you were back with us, um, oh, we spoke end of August last year, mm. um, just I think it was about episode 16 it was, and you were just at the very beginning of putting together a big adventure. Yeah, absolutely. It feels like, uh, feels like ages ago, but... Uh, it was like about 17 years ago now. <laughs> um, <laughs> so been so busy since then. Yeah. 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 A few I mean, more wrinkles on the old face. <laughs> 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 I thought that's largely the makeup, though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, big adventure. Then it seemed to go down down really well. I think you added extra dates, didn't you, as well, or extra performances? Yeah, cast cast your mind back. It was uh, it was good fun. We had a lot of really really good turnout, so we added more performances. Summertime, everybody outside yeah. on the blankets, all the kids having mm. a great time. So. Yeah, it was a good one. Beautiful to be performing in a castle. Mm. Yeah. Bring back the castles, that's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was like, obviously, it was our first performance, our first show. We were really just testing out what 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 was going to work, what wasn't going to work. And we had no budget for props, costumes, set, design, anything. And so it was literally just myself and Michelle there uh, yeah. making a show and, and putting it on. Yeah, and finding a, a real appetite for, for, for theatre for children on the island yeah. as well. Mm. Yeah, and all the kids seemed to love it as well. I mean, my mm. wife took my daughter and she was just mm-hmm. totally taken in by the whole thing the whole way through, just completely absorbed in it. Absolutely. Oh, I love that. Yeah. We've had um, we've had some amazing kind of uh, kids that have followed us for the whole journey now. In fact, we, um, we started off doing, before we even did A Big Adventure, we did a little pop-up performance in Onken Park and we just met these two kids uh, that took a liking to us. We gave them a, a Hello Little People sticker and they have been with us through the whole journey and have <laughs> yeah. been to every show that are front and centre and they go amazing. wild for all of our stuff. So Brilliant. Big really up the fans. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Who doesn't love my um, Nanning on the top of a castle exactly. as a rock star, you exactly. know, <laughs> dreamy. What other way to have him, really? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, was it off the back of a big adventure then that you got approached for the freaky folklore? Then, yeah, definitely. So, Manx National Heritage got in touch with us, and um, they commissioned us to create a piece for them. It kind of very open at the start, but basically in a, a, a tour of the Manx Museum. Um, so it was really cool. So we created an immersive tour of the museum called Freaky Folklore um, in which initially schools came and they, they journeyed with us through through the museum and met various 
various folklores and it was really cool Chloe because um we got to turn turn off the lights and run around you know the yeah, museum yeah basically and everything that you you are told that you're not allowed to do in a museum we were like that's exactly what we want to do <laughs> can we do this please can we do this and uh you know they we, they started off being like i'm not i'm not so sure maybe you know we could do this and by the end of it they were loving it you know yeah. we had the lights off we had a, a rock concert by one of the um manx folklore called the a Glashton. rapper a rapper <laughs> yeah 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 a rapper um stormzy vibes <laughs> yeah, rock star rapper. Yeah. Um so yeah, we just we just try to do all the fun things that you want to do when you're a kid. I yeah. Think. Amazing. And also what you want to do as an adult. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. So I mean, I, you know, I wish I was still at school because I would have loved to, yes. to have done that. What about you, Neil? Yeah, definitely. Um, making museums interesting is a is a good thing, isn't mm. it? You know. Mm. Yeah. Nothing more boring than just wandering around no. looking at all the dusty old relics, is there? Definitely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we had, you know, loads of songs. You got the kids chanting, running around. You know, <laughs> yeah. it really was mad and. And there was a, a point where we had a couple of customers who were still going around the Manx Museum because the Manx Museum was open to the public at yeah. the same time. Yeah. Um, and they were just going, what is going on? <laughs> the lights have suddenly gone off. Everybody's screaming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. So did that then lead you on to um, your panto? Yeah, I think yeah, we, um, there was a few wee things in between. Um, we we headed up to the Children's Centre, which is an amazing um, organisation and place up there, where we did a Halloween um, event called a Spooky Beg Adventure. So uh-huh. just a, a wee kind of twist on the Beg Adventure where uh, many a goat were involved in the performance. <laughs> yeah, real life goats. Yeah, real life wow. goats. And yeah. uh, and and then we headed. Never work with animals. Absolutely. <laughs> and then we headed off to uh, the bright lights of the nunnery, uh, yeah. and uh, created the alternative pantomime last Chewing year. Chewing and the beanstalk. Yeah. Chewing and the yeah. beanstalk. You don't get Chewing. more than manx than that. Amazing. No, good fuss. Good, good fun. Good, good <laughs> fun. Good fun. So, how many characters then did you play in Jewin and the Beanstalk? Because I'd imagine Jewin and the Beanstalk. There was probably five? quite a few. At least five. At least five. More than five, surely. Oh, should we have a count? Ready? Here we go. There was uh, there was Jewin. There, there was there was the wee song. There was Jewin and his crabs. Oh, and yeah. a mother, and uh, a oh. baddie, and a mermaid, and a beanstalk, and a giant, and a servant, and, and some ice cream that was just for fun. <laughs> yes. no, oh, I've heard a little rumour about ice cream. Have you got some yes. special ice cream? Rumour? It is not a rumour, Neil. It's a true, <laughs> real, Ooh. living product. Oh. Um, yeah. yeah, we partnered up with Davison's Ice Cream because um, the, the way that Chloe and I kind of came up with this idea initially back in in june time was over a a davison's ice cream and therefore um you know it is very close to our heart <laughs> so uh lovely greg and ian created us a hello little people ice cream that which was is so sweet. awesome many we, a color we chatted to greg smarty. and said you know this is what hello little people is he really got a sense of us and he was like yeah absolutely i'll make you a make you the ice cream so it went down a storm at june and the beanstalk Lots wow. and lots of kids very happy to have the sprinkles on top. Oh, that's perfect, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So how was it then performing in the, the marquee down at the nunnery? Really good. Um, I think, you know, the audiences were really, really receptive of a new space, something a bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure there has been a theatrical performance in the nunnery before, so uh, we like to be first, don't yeah. we? Yeah, it was super fun. Just a different kind of relaxed atmosphere, very very um not what you'd expect when you go to the a theater and you watch a panto you know you're coming into the the nunnery and you were able to run around and and uh fight one another with various glow sticks and whatnot <laughs> and and we were so close to the audience yeah. Yeah. Super close. That, like that that it really is an interactive experience for the children so rather than sitting back and, and watching something on the stage they were almost in it they were so close they were you know characters were running right past them and i think it just was really exciting to see sweat dripping on various children's <laughs> yeah, yeah. as we change to our seventh character <laughs> yeah uh behind a, a curtain <laughs> very thankful for the, the curtain. <laughs> so did you have the same musical and um directing team involved as you did with big adventure yeah so we um we we didn't really have a team at that point uh, uh-huh. for, for a big adventure i think Big adventure was uh, no. Chloe and Michelle, yeah. and, <laughs> and, no, and our, our lovely and, composer uh, Isaac, yeah. who's Isaac's journeyed been with on us the, the whole time. Yeah, the whole time, Isaac. 
Yeah. Yeah. So Isaac created, um, helped, uh, worked with us to create the music for for Juin, and that was um, whereas Beg Adventure was was more all kind of all acoustic stuff. We were mm. playing it live. Um, lots of the Juin stuff was pre-recorded, and we were kind of singing over it, which was um, just new and fun. And and yeah, we still didn't have any that any techies or director, so we were operating the lights and the sound. And, and performing. performing it at the same time, which oh is God. yeah, <laughs> and trying Mad. to do that while you know not re- not having any backstage really, yeah. and so hiding from children as you switch the lights up to them appear <laughs> as a character, it was you know yeah, mad. We madness. really could have could have done with maybe perhaps one person yeah. doing lights yeah. and sound, but you know we had we had a lot of support from yeah. people and a lot of um and our, our, actually our director for the Twits, Caroline Devlin, she she came and gave us a gave us some help with doing and we said this bit's not working. What do you think mm. of the script? And so she was uh, on hand to give us some pointers, which we were really thankful for yeah it was a go 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 because really it was three weeks um three weeks before the show opened we'd already sold plenty of tickets and had not actually written a (laughs) word yet so um so it was um fresh that is a challenge isn't it yes yeah why make it easy (laughs) there's there's nothing like like an audience to to focus the mind in in writing the 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 piece exactly you've got no excuses you've (laughs) you've got to get it done (laughs) so coming coming into the new year then um the next thing well, we had the inevitable lockdowns, January 1st, and then we came back into, into March. And through the first week of March, you set up some a sort of online, live, half-hour, daily workshops, I suppose, was the best thing to do. Yeah, we were super lucky in that we um, we actually had performances of freaky folklore just before oh, yeah. we went into lockdown. So right. between January and March, because freaky folklore went so well with the primary school kids... Manx National Heritage invited us to do public performances. Right. So we got a week in of performances, which is just a bit mad to think, actually, between the two lockdowns. Mm. Um, yeah, well timed for us. And yeah. then, um, boom, lockdown hit, and I was, I said to Chloe, "What we're going to do? We're going to have to do something." Thinking it would just be another three weeker. Yeah, we want to um, adapt. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and and so we came up with this. Um, lots of people have been talking to us about how ho- homeschooling is so difficult, and mm. you know they really struggled with it. And if there's another lockdown, I'm not homeschooling anymore. So <laughs> yeah. we thought, yeah, we thought we'd give school of little people a go. And um, yeah, within a weekend, we had 500 children signed up and yeah. uh, ready to take their class every day for half an hour at, at one o'clock. Brilliant. Yeah. So school yeah. of little people. It's a it was purely because of lockdown, 30 minutes of fun, you know, whatever we could think of in advance of what the kids were going to enjoy at home, something to let the, the parents sit back and just have a cup of tea and just <laughs> a bit of a rest in the middle of homeschooling. Um, so we had we had great fun over Zoom. Lots and lots of people signed up, loads of people learnt our songs and uh, mm, whatever else. Yeah, and the, the, yes, the again, Hello Little People theme tune does just... Uh-huh. randomly just come up in my brain every so often why not why not <laughs> yeah both <laughs> super fun so many children come up to us now and are like i've got my smelly socks on oh. and which is just one day that we did for school of little people it's really cute <laughs> and so we had like a, at one point with hundreds of kids on on zoom obviously all on mute because otherwise absolute madness <laughs> but we thought you know it was uh it was quite far into it now in the middle of lockdown everybody's feeling a bit down we thought we're gonna uh, we're gonna all unmute them all and uh we're all gonna sing hello little Aww. people yeah. and it was just i thought oh, this is gonna go this is gonna go wrong it's gonna be awful but just to hear that back after we'd yeah. been doing it for weeks and weeks and weeks and not really hearing them but seeing them have a good time yeah to then take them all off mute and they all knew the song and they Aww. all went yeah. for it Aww, and they brilliant. were just brilliant you know really smiling at spirits up <laughs> yeah now I spoke to you, um, bumped into the pair of you at the uh, the local park run, actually. The local just, park run, the just, one and only on the island. Just, just before, uh, just where before. do you park run, ah, oh, Douglas? <laughs> that the that only one. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, just so I, I, I <laughs> yeah, so I bumped into you then at the end of February then at at, uh, at Nobles Park Run, just before lockdown, and you were just about to launch into two or three weeks of solid rehearsals for the Twits, which obviously got pushed back because I think your dates originally were sort of March time weren't they? April, April Raleigh yeah. Yeah. April yeah um, so obviously you were, get, were get gearing up for that intense period of, of rehearsal mm. 
had you intended to move in together? Because I assumed from watching <laughs> watching the daily <laughs> the daily uh, Hello Little People thing, I assumed obviously you were you were living in the same house together. Yeah, no, no, we, it was we... just really good Photoshop. Now. I don't know what you're on about. <laughs> Couldn't no. spend six weeks with Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we um, well, no, we decided to do that because of um, because of School of Little People, and we yeah. wanted to to be able to work together and, and create lots of the other things that we're writing at the moment throughout lockdown. And it's obviously difficult when you. When you're not allowed to see each other. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It only works face to face, you see. Yeah. So, hello, little people, you know, probably wouldn't work via many a video. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'd miss Chloe too much. Oh. <laughs> so, so, whose parents were unfortunate enough to have to put up with the pair of you then? Through oh, the oh yeah, neither. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are fully formed adults, Neil. Oh, oh. 26. Oh. <laughs> what do you know? Oh, bless. <laughs> so, obviously, it's doing well, then you got your own place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Marvellous. So, there's there's the home of the whole of little people then. Yes, well, there's bunting off and everything. Tell the Manx public all about it. <laughs> if you'd like the address, just yeah. in, the, in the notes below. The yeah, 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 yeah we we'll... do receive dominoes on a Friday night. <laughs> should you wish to... Uh... Sometimes on a Tuesday. <laughs> Two for Tuesday. <laughs> What well, about uh, I'm, sure we, I'm sure we can publish that through our Facebook and Instagram later on so yeah. people know where to go. Yeah, thank you. I like sunflowers as well. <laughs> All of this is jokes. <laughs> Great. Well, I'll tell you what, I think we've, we've, we've come to a little bit of a natural lull there. So what yes. we'll do now is, um, what we'll do is we'll uh, have a listen to my chat with uh, Tim Keys and Michelle Kane from Peel Looney Pants. And we'll come back to you again in a couple of minutes. You're listening to the Manx Theatre Podcast with Neil King and Neil Callan. I'm joining the podcast today by two members of the cast of the upcoming Peel Looney Pants production of Cinderella. I'm joined by Tim Keyes, who's playing Prince Charming, and Michelle Kane, who's playing Cinderella and is also the director. Tim, Michelle, welcome to the podcast. Hi. Hello. <laughs> welcome along. So, Michelle, this is, this is not your first time on the podcast, is it? Because I think back in 2019, you spoke to Neil King about Peter Pan. Yes, that's right. When I was the little mischievous Tinkerbell. Um, so that was that was with the Peel Pantaloons, but this this is the Peel Looney Pants. Obviously, there's a a distinction and a differentiation there b- between the two. Yeah. So obviously, with the Peel Pantaloons, they've been a um, a good long running community family oriented place for the last thirty years. Um, so with this being more adult oriented we thought we're better off keep it separated entirely from the peel pantaloons that's why the loony pants name came about so that we could keep it completely separate and that is purely adult entertainment rather than you know family the standard yeah. christmas fair yeah now there's probably I'm just looking through your cast list here and there's there's quite a few well-known pantaloons names amongst that cast isn't there because obviously you've got yeah. victoria reynolds as fairy honey Yourself as Cinderella, <laughs> Tim as Prince Charming, Mark Britton as Dandini. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Yes. Uh, we have Craig Killia as Buttons, and as the Wicked Stepsisters, we have Lawrence Watterson and Andrew Whitmore. Now, Andrew Whitmore, I've known for a very, very long time. I did Peel Pantaloons for about four or five years, back 94, 95 onwards. I know you. Oh, yes, I did. Hey. Oh, that You're took us precisely in. two minutes to get that one in. So well done. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Andrew, Andrew had been involved in the Panto way back then with Red Riding Hood in '94. He may have been involved earlier than that. I don't know, and I can't remember. But that's a good, solid twenty-five years plus of of pantomimes. Yeah, no, it is. I mean, Andy is is such a seasoned professional that a lot of the time he just comes on and he's just so flawless and seamless with mm-hmm. what he's doing. Like he was he literally just saying to me two minutes ago, he was joking about saying that I haven't done much directing. I said, Andy, why do I need to? You're a professional. Leave it be. It's fine. <laughs> he doesn't need any now. He's, he's awesome to work with. Yeah. He was brilliant as Hook. I, I loved every second of that. And in this, as one of the ugly sisters, he's so. Uh, Andy Whitmore let off the chain completely. <laughs> Worth a watch. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> you'll have to you'll have to ask him about the time he played the genie in Aladdin back in the nineties. Okay. I'll, I'll I'll leave that story with you because there were some interesting things that happened each time the genie came on. But I'll I'll let him fill you in on, on those. I will look forward to hearing it. <laughs> yeah, we'll close so, him on that. So Cinderella, then 
I'm assuming yeah. it follows the standard story that we all know and love, but there are probably a few differences thrown in along the way. Yes, definitely. So it's the typical um, rags to riches story of a girl who's desperate to fall in love, but desperation is very much a, a key thing in Cinderella's mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a nice way of putting that's it. That's a nice way of putting yeah. it. And yeah, so she does. She finally, her fairy godmother comes along, grants her her wish, and she finds her prince charming, and everything's all wonderful in the end and all peachy. So, standard Cinderella story, but less of the double entendre, more of a straight single entendre. Yes. Plenty of double entendres in there too, but they're not, um, yeah, kid friendly. No, no, no. no. Very, very firmly in 18 plus then. Yes, definitely. Um, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's basically the panto that you want to see when you don't have the kids. Yeah. Um, yeah, one you definitely need to leave the kids at home for. Uh, the, the things that you'd expect to come out of the, you know, the, the cast mouse, you can just see it. It's on the tip of the tongue, but they have to be so careful. Whereas now <laughs> it's just free for all, let it all out, go for it. And yeah, sometimes it's been quite a trouble having to get them to rein it back in. It's like, guys, come on. <laughs> <laughs> there's years of pent up panto frustration yeah. oh yeah and uh yeah. yeah rehearsals have been a riot yeah. literally a riot the other day we were literally just slagging each other off yeah really <laughs> <laughs> we're like great <laughs> yeah can we get back but, to the script at some point yeah eventually much. <laughs> <laughs> you, you must yeah, have a pretty like, unenviable job there michelle trying to keep them in 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 line yeah, very much so. It's very difficult. <laughs> they, you see, these are all scared of me in normal panto because I have my, my, you know, my strict sort of, I want to say teacher voice. I'm not a teacher of any sort, but because when you're trying to keep keep um, all sorts of children in line, you have to have that either mum or teacher voice. And I have that in panto here. I'm just little Shelly here. Yeah. So it's like, go on up and go away, will you? <laughs> <laughs> I call it your uh-oh voice yeah i was like i don't I, uh, uh oh yeah. <laughs> that's literally the thought i've got when i hear it and it's like ah uh, what have i done <laughs> it's hit the fan moment yes <laughs> yeah is this the first adult panto on the island i can't think of another that there's been we are under the impression that it is very much the first one on mm. the isle of man um we did a couple of years ago um sort of a a little one as a charity and um, really for life charity raising fundraising evening uh-huh. at the golf club and that's where this is all sort of stemmed from it's like oh why why can't we why can't we make this a thing and obviously andy yeah. as you know very seasoned and he just said he's been trying to suggest it for a while and it was just eventually we managed to get a hold of a, a really decent script and we thought come on let's let's run with this before somebody else gets in there and yeah yeah, so this one's this one's written by Tom Whaley, who also wrote the panto you did last year. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, he's he's been really supportive. Actually, he's been really lovely. He's gone and suggested a few songs, and um, you know anything that we've needed from him. He's been very tentative to everything that we've needed, so he's been really good. Brilliant. Yeah. I but- worried. I first heard that he he was going to write he written the adult panto script. Mm-hmm. Because I thought, well, you know, last year's was very family friendly, but um, I don't know. Last year's was very borderline, though. <laughs> it, was, it was borderline. <laughs> but, oh, I can't go much further than that. And yes, he, he can. He did. He went yes, there. He the line it crossed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he can. But, there, but board, there some joke borderline is perfect for Panther, though, isn't it? Because there's a stuff yeah. in there for the parents. The kids laugh because it sounds funny, and the parents laugh because they know it's funny. <laughs> yeah. And this, it's just, I guess, it's just out and out, then, isn't it? Yes, it's yeah. a complete free for all. No bars hold. That's it. Just do it. It's gone. Yeah. Great no bars so, hold. I know what I'm. I know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. yeah. I bought it. <laughs> it sounds good to me. So yeah. it's on on Friday the fourth and Saturday the fifth of June. Yes. So we're about four weeks to go. Yeah. 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 Sorry, just gave with that. <laughs> How, how's it looking? Is it going good? Are we ready? It, well, not ready. Obviously, don't want to be too ready, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, obviously we had the difficulty with the lockdown, so yes. we were doing rehearsals. So they were very the handy in a way because obviously you can just literally line bash, but then it was so difficult to be able to say, right, can you say this in this way and can you do that in that way? Because mm. when you're together, so our first rehearsal that we had together after the lockdown had lifted, 
um, you know, it, it was all, we were all trying to get used to each other again. Yeah, it was um, weird. So, mm. <laughs> just so used to having the script there as well. Yeah. I mean, it's just. Whereas now you were having to put that movement into it and say, right, guys, come on. So, you need to come over here and do that. You need to go over and adjust and whatever else. So, yeah. At least Andy doesn't have to do any more rehearsals in his car. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Poor guy, you know he's he's got a he's got a church group meeting going on in his house, and he's sat in the car in his driveway because he doesn't want to hear the script. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, <laughs> uh, yeah. At least he doesn't have to do that again. Know, yeah. A prayer group in the front room, and he's effing and jeffing in the dining room. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> yeah. We knew when someone walked past the car. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, because he sort of went from really like damn okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're mute. Like, no, I'm just so fast. <laughs> oh yes, on mute. That's the the the, uh, the bane of the online rehearsal, isn't it? Oh, it goes yeah, around the room and suddenly there's one person going, "We can't hear yeah. you. You're on mute." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Comes through really well on radio. That it yeah. does. It does. Yes, but then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was doing, always doing the Zoom on my phone, so obviously you can only get a maximum of four people on your screen at the one time. And obviously, when there's seven in the cast, and then we've got Mel who's helping prompt, you flick in between all the screens, or you've got it on the one screen, and you can't see what anybody else is doing. You can hear people sniggering, you're like, "What are they laughing at? What's happening? What's going on?" So yeah. That was my hardest thing about it all. <laughs> uh, mine was the stupid idea of having, I know, I'll use the work laptop because I, I use Zoom on that every day. Not a problem. Uh... Bing, bing, bing. Was that him? Another <laughs> pop-up. I'm not at work anymore, guys. <laughs> and if you ever hear what I'm saying, that yeah. <laughs> Don't like my employment chances. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so both of you, both of you, you, you know, strangest to the stage you've both been involved with with quite a few shows over the years tim i think you've been involved with a couple of gns ones and maybe some center stage yeah yeah um i i managed to do one with center stage before they became properly center stage but i i yeah i was mainly gns where they had the brilliant idea of making me a lead character for a couple of them i don't know why <laughs> i think they regretted that <laughs> But yeah, uh, Shell has more experience than me, though, I must say. Yeah, well, 12 years, so doing Panto itself for 12 years, and then I was doing um, Inspirations with Jules, Morrison and Peel, um, and then I've done Back to the 80s and Adam's Family with Centre Stage as well. So, yeah, I've directed twice prior to this with the Panto and been in on the production side of Panto for a few years as well, as on stage. Yeah, and you're part of the Panto committee as well, so that's, I mean, that's even more work. Sucker for punishment is what I like to call it. <laughs> Sounds like a bit of Panto royalty, really. Uh, I wouldn't go that far, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, Tim, is, is, this your, is this your first uh, venture into Panto, or have you done some with, with the, the Peel Pantaloons before? Um, I, I have the Pantaloons to thank for basically getting me on a stage. Um, they, they asked me to come along and say you should do this and it was it was Aladdin a few years ago and I was not in a very good place and mm -hmm. I needed my confidence building up and these guys you were Cinderella first no no it was Aladdin first no it was I... Cinderella first because was yeah because I was I had Archie no, but didn't I do Aladdin where I was wishy-washy or was that before I think it might have been you see, there's so many pantos. Yeah, it just rolls bit, into one. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, what are we doing the next one? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, you're you right, actually. No, no, you are right. Aladdin, when I was yeah. pregnant. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah I, I did five yeah. five pantos with peeled pantaloons, and Red Riding Hood was my first in 1994. I know what the other four are. I couldn't tell you what order they were. Yeah. Weirdly, Red yeah. Riding Hood was my first one in 2008. Right. I played Tom Foolery, Red Riding Hood's brother. Did you? Yeah. I was just a little chorus member back then. But I stumped my way to the top. <laughs> ah, brilliant. Right. So <laughs> the tickets then, they're on sale yeah. now. Yes. How do we get a hold of them and how much are they? 
So they are £12 per ticket and you can get them at etickets.im forward slash cc um, or if it's easier to say, go to the Centenary Centre website and it's on the What's On guide there. Brilliant. Okay, four weeks to go then. All the very yeah. best with your rehearsals and um, we'll speak to you again soon. Excellent. Thanks, <laughs> Neil. No Thanks, Neil. Cheers now. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. If you're interested in local musicians and artists, check out our sister podcast, Supergroup, where Neil King talks to Manx songwriters and musicians as they set up their fantasy supergroup. You're listening to the Manx Theatre Podcast. Thanks once again to Tim and Michelle for talking to us about Cinders. As a reminder, you can book by going to the Peel Centenary Centre's website at www.centenarycentre.com. During the interview, I forgot to ask Tim and Michelle uh, about their suggestions for our Max Theatre podcast playlist, which we started back in episode 14, I think. So the song that Tim has chosen to add is Younger Than Springtime from South yeah. Pacific. That's I was in that with him. Yeah, yeah. So that's my one first of your, show. Yeah. One of your favourites, yeah. first show, yeah. And uh, Michelle has chosen For Good from Wicked. Mm-hmm. Tune. So some good choices there, and uh, and uh, you know the playlist now is getting. We've got about thirty five songs on that playlist now, so it's it's starting to, to build up and, and get get quite good now. Some theatrical bangers, aren't they? Yeah. Some theatrical bangers. Right. So let's have a look. Um, we've got a, f- a fair list now of, of things that are that are coming up. Things are starting to come thick and fast now. Um, obviously, with everything delayed, everything seems to have now been sort of squashed in quite close together, and mm. everything's coming. Yeah, coming on top of each other. So yeah. Not yeah. a lot of space between things. No. First up, we've got the Christine Wilde Theatre School and Rachel Wilde's Performer Studio. Their long-awaited production of The Wizard of Oz is finally going to be staged uh, next week from the 19th to the 23rd of May at the Gaiety. It's been mm. delayed and moved yeah, about four times yeah. now. I think it should have originally been out early summer last oh year. My gosh. But now they're... They're finally getting it on stage. They're in the theatre as we speak. Yes, so they're nearly there, aren't they? They're nearly, nearly there. there. And then Parker Snell are doing To Kill a Mockingbird from the 27th to the 29th of May at the Gaiety. So we'll try and catch uh, one of the cast or a couple of the casts before that if we can. Yep. Also on the 27th to 29th of May at the Youth Arts Centre on Kensington Road, the Isle of Man National Theatre Connections team will be presenting their entry Windrush Generations, which due to COVID travel restrictions this year means they're not allowed to travel away to perform and take part. So all the entrants in the competition this year are submitting a recording of their performances. Then, as mentioned earlier, the Peel Looney Pants are bringing their debut production to the Centenary Centre in Peel on the 4th and 5th of June, and it's an 18-plus adults-only performance of Cinder's The Adult Panto. Then, a new one to add into the list is the Service Players. They're bringing Marion, or The True Tale of Robin Hood, to the Gaiety from the 8th and 10th of July, and you're involved in that, aren't you, Mr I am. I'm co-directing. That's exciting, isn't it? Wow. You knew me knew me when I was nothing, didn't you? Huh? Yeah. There's no yeah. need to laugh, Michelle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was mildly humorous. Yeah. <laughs> it is a bit of a joke that I'm doing it, but uh, yeah, they wrote me in, so <laughs> it's going to be wonderful. It will, you know. It's, it should be a really good show. We've, we've about eight rehearsals in now, so yeah, should be good. Good, good, it's exciting. Then we've also got Taylor Productions, a chorus line from August the seventh, August the seventh to the fourteenth, and that's also at the Gaiety Theatre. Marvellous. I feel like I need a bit of a TV guide or something know, in front right. of me, yeah. It's it's a no pad Ma- and pen. Yeah. Yeah. For the Manx Theatre fan, it's just non stop, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Of course the one thing though in that little lineup that we also forgot to mention is Hello Little People presenting mm. the Twits at the Gaiety Theatre da, 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 from da, 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 June da, 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 the eleventh to the thirteenth. Yes. I'm so glad you mentioned it. Yeah, yeah. that would have been super awkward. <laughs> 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 there's just there's something <laughs> yeah. something yeah, else. The Twits. Roll dolls the Twits. Whoop whoops. So how's it going? Absolutely fantastically. It's going to be one of the best things you've ever seen at the Gaiety in your entire lives. Wow. Um, yeah, <laughs> no, it's going to be fantastic. We're absolutely over the moon to, to have been able to get the rights to the twits. Uh, it's certainly never been performed on the island and the, mm-hmm. the professional rights to it are absolutely unheard of, kind yeah. of, to be able yeah. to, for anyone to ever get it. Yeah. And so it was uh, a bit of a using our contacts to be able to try and get the... The, the professional rights and the dollar state have, have given exclusive agreement because of the the situation that the island was in during COVID. Uh-huh. Um, so we're ex- really excited. 
Brilliant. So this will be your first time as Hello Little People in the Gaiety, though. It will indeed. It's a, it's a big learning curve. We've mm. come a long way since we were in Castle Russian on the picnic blankets. Mm. So, uh, yeah, we're just, we're just buzzing and we, we love working in the Gaiety, Michelle, Michelle and I. Um, when we were amateur uh, performers, I've done a lot of work in the Gaiety, mm. so it's really nice to come back mm. having trained professionally and, and produce something in the Gaiety. Mm. Really awesome. Absolutely, and this um, production is, is co in co-production with the Villa Gaiety, because you know there has not been any children's theatre on the produced on the island before. So um, to have a local company producing um, professional p- production is is pretty cool. So they they hopped on board, and what we're really excited about is actually bringing the essence of Hello Little People. So you know we're not going to completely wave goodbye to the the picnic blankets and the castle walls but actually we're going to bring that that essence and that interactive and immersive sense into the gaiety so it's not kind of a them and us feel but we're all at one uh in the in a such a cool space yeah and we're keeping the um the hello little people trait of it is michelle and i that play all of the characters Uh so if you know the twits it's seven characters plus yes (laughs) uh and so yeah we're gonna we're gonna take on all of them uh, so but who is growing a beard? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, you'll have to look at a poster to find out. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> we couldn't tell from the poster, could we? <laughs> I, I just thought it was the lighting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's me. laughs> so how how did they go about that? Who who? Uh, how did you choose who played Mister Twit? Yeah, it wasn't. Um, it wasn't a uh, cast list um, up. So we've you seen the cast list up. <laughs> it's got the cast list. Um, <laughs> no, we were just working on it um, with our, with our director Caroline, and she she told us who we were playing, and we said thanks very much. Yes, yes, yeah. And what's exciting is it's not you know as we say it's seven characters. So there's Mister and Mrs. Twit, and then um, as soon as I mention them, I'm sure everyone who's ever read the Twits will firmly remember the, the roly come- the roly poly bird mm-hmm. and. Um, and the muggle wumps, the monkeys, and mm-hmm. yeah, it, they do kind of come flooding back. Yeah, once you once you see the old pictures and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with the two of you playing all seven parts, it must be a bit of a logistical nightmare. Whoever's the, your director that decided who was playing which part, because you have to work out right. Okay, so they're on together yeah. and they're on together. But, yeah, absolutely. So you both can't be on the same together because you're both playing the same character. <laughs> exactly, it is a bit of a uh, a mad kind of. Thing to to get your head around but we've got uh puppets we've got mad costume changes quick changes of lighting effects we've got a really a much bigger team than we've ever had before of amazing professionals that just do incredible things for us yeah. so with all of that in we're gonna make it a pretty yeah. spectacular uh, performance I'm, a, I'm imagining lots of spreadsheets as well Oh, there's so many spreadsheets. Many a spreadsheet, colour schemed. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, bespoke puppets that have been made exclusive for the oh. the production. Wow. So they are absolutely magical. Yeah, by by Annie from from who works at the children's centre. She's absolutely fabulous. Has has really adapted. Or you know, or we've got a, a designer, a set designer, and a costume designer uh, who had these ideas, and just Annie and all of our team have been able to really bring them to life. And it's pretty spectacular to see drawings and. Come from this original concept of just like oh we'd really love to do this and we'd really love to have pink monkeys f- to actually have a puppet yeah. that has been made exactly for us yeah. in your hands yeah it's just awesome it's incredible so good. yeah so it sounds like big budget stuff then <laughs> yes hollywood budget well right, hollywood. hollywood dreams uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> chloe and i's a- back a- pocket a- <laughs> <laughs> and your mum's gilet again the mum's gilet. <laughs> Sna- oh, no, Neil. unfortunately, Snazzy requested the gilet back, yeah, and it it. it's never it. to be seen again. No. So she's locked <laughs> it up. Locked. And, oh, yeah. Dear. So a disappointment. Uh, a disappointment. Absolutely, yeah. we've had to get some costumes Costume made. Costume budget now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, we've got some fantastic sponsors that have been investing in Hello Little People and um, supporting us in our journey. So um, Conister Bank are supporting us, and um, for the, this production, we've got Domicilian and DQ. Shimon Wilson, um, Melly or you know, to, to name but a few. So we're really, really lucky. Mm. And it's great to see the Hello Little People van driving around. Yeah, I, I always smile when I see that as well. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> yeah. It's nice to see, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's so lovely when you do go past children that have yeah. either seen a show or, or have heard about it because they run, yeah. they shout, they point, <laughs> they, they sing Hello Little People at Aww. you. So the anonymity is, <laughs> is yeah. even less than the Alaman usually is. Bella. <laughs> lovely Bella. Bella, Aww. yeah. Conister Bank uh, sponsorship of that. <laughs> 
that's brilliant. I mean, obviously, that's that's a great sign that you're clearly doing something something right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So. Right. So, um, I'm assuming tickets are obviously on sale. They absolutely are. You can whip your tickets up um, at villagaity dot com. Um, you get them in your get them in your pocket. Get them sorted because yeah. this is going to be something that you've you've really not seen anything like this. It's a completely new imagination and um i'm going to do some great things in the gaiety things yeah. that um are really going to push some boundaries so i'm not going yeah. to give too much away but you know yeah expect the unexpected it's Excellent. not too long so it's absolutely well and truly aimed towards children mm. we know that children do not like to sit still for you know more than going for an hour you know yeah. so we're, we've got it's in two intervals we're going to have loads and loads of fun and um and we will keep you entertained from the word go yeah brilliant well, I'll tell you what, I've already got my ticket, so I can't wait. Uh, Good stuff. June from the, June the 11th to the 13th. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Ooh. Neil, now, being as it's our second birthday, and we always ask the questions of all of our listeners about uh, their, what's that, our getting to know you section. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, we're 24 episodes in. Mm -hmm. I answered the questions in the first podcast. You've asked them for lots of people over the years, but you've never been asked them yourself. So, oh, I don't even remember the questions I'm anymore. Springing, I'm going to spring this on you now. Oh, okay, I've got them here. Oh, wow. Okay, there you go. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, let's Neil go. King. Let's go for it. Let's get to know. This is your life. So, <laughs> then. <laughs> so then, Neil, what was your first ever role? My first ever role. Um, it was yeah, we were just mentioned before actually South Pacific, not that long ago. Um, I played a horny sailor. Yeah, called <laughs> Hamilton Steves, I think it was. Like, eighth sailor from the back. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's the first thing I did, yeah. Got a few extra lines, and it built up a bit, but yeah, fun. South Pacific is a really good show, actually. Um, so it was a good one to start with, I think. It's quite a classic, really, isn't it? So. Was, was that GNS, or was it, or it said GNS, State, yeah, yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. then, what's, what was your latest role? My latest role? Um, not an anything at the moment, apart from... Uh, co-directing the Marion one. My no, what's what's your last role? What was oh, the last, last role. Last thing you did, yeah. What's the latest thing you've done? Well, I had a little part in Wind in the Willows, uh -huh. but my last major one was the Adams Family. Yes, uh, Mal Beinicky and that one. So that was really good. That was a, a really good part, really good show as well. So that was and, fun. Uh, what was the name of your character then in uh, in Wind of the Willows? Cyril the Stoat. Cyril the Stoat. Yeah, I had a little blank before, didn't I? But I can <laughs> I remember it now. Yeah, Cyril the Stoat. So what's what's the favourite role that you've played over the years? I think because it's the biggest, and I'm you know an egomaniac. I think um, Oscar in Sweet Charity. That was my kind of lead. Well, it wasn't lead role, but lead male role. So yeah. uh, that was really fun to play. Some nice songs, a bit of stage smooching as well. Ooh. You can't you can't go wrong with that, can can't, you? Can't go wrong with yeah. stage smooching, can you? Um, so yeah, I think that's my favourite. Wait till we see Mr. and Mrs. Tritch. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be as romantic as my uh, my romantic scene, I would imagine. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've just lost Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's what's your dream role then? What's what's on that bucket list? What's the top of that bucket list for you? It's got to be Mrs. Twit, I think. Yeah, that's what I've always wanted. To do. Well, <laughs> just trying to get in this show. Yeah. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> if I carry on the way I'm going, I'll be out. Caroline, it's recast. <laughs> um, dream role, Oof. just because it springs to mind, I'm going to say Mr. Stewart in Grease 2. Uh, That'd be a nice one to do, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <That's> quite wrong. <laughs> Is that too obvious? Too ob yeah, yeah, too obvious. Yeah. Grease 2? Yeah. If I could dance a little bit, I'd, I'd like to be a Jersey boy as well, but I can't, so yeah. I think I could do Mr. Stewart. I could do his scene, but um, yeah. Yeah, we'll never know. We'll never know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Neil's Neil's like one of the only, like the three only people in the entire world that that really love Grease Two. Oh no, it's it's it's, it's more it's better than Grease One. The words oh. Grease yeah. Two in years. See, you get it all on this podcast, people. You know, actually, they did make it into a musical. It was called yeah. Cool Rider, wasn't it? Mm, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. It got cancelled, but yeah, it was uh, it was good. You know, yeah. But you're gonna bring it back to the island, Neil. <laughs> Sign <I'll>, me. <laughs> See, they're in premiere of Cool Rider. You heard it. Although it has to be Cool Rider. Oh, and the girls can play all the either all the T birds and pink ladies themselves, you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what are the best and worst costumes that you've ever worn? Worst probably the Nazi suit in producers. Yeah. That's oh, probably dude. that was probably <laughs> that was a bit that was a bit weird. Yeah. Um Best one 
the Nazi suit in prison. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Do you know, actually, though, though, quite a few people have had had the, the same costume for both the best and, and worst. Yeah. I mean, the guys last last time round with with the Shrek costumes have said there's some amazing costumes, but at the same time, they're so hot, they're so heavy yeah. mm, they for the for that. And, and Lorcan, poor Lorcan, mm. he just physio throughout the week just to get him through yeah. all that time spent on his knees. I mean, yeah. Did he actually have physio? Yeah, he had to have physio. Yeah, to, to sort his back and his knees out. Yes. He wants to do some Pilates. I know. Tell you. I know. Tell a girl. Yeah. Pilates, <laughs> Michelle. I've heard is good. <laughs> Com. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think best costume would be I had a lovely snazzy silk bomber jacket in nine to five. I quite enjoyed that one. Yeah, and I, I wanted to keep it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a range I have. <laughs> <laughs> I played a complete. Can I say <laughs> on um, podcasts? Are you going to edit that out? No? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. He wasn't a nice man. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Right, then the tricky one, and you might not be able to answer this one straight off either, but it's the gender swap question. Surely you must have thought about this over oh God. all the episodes. Gender swap. Um, I'll have to go for one of my, one of the girls in Mamma Mia, won't I? Yeah? I'll, oh, you I, have to. Yeah. <laughs> now, am I... Am you I, don't I, have which to. Which, yeah, which am I? Am I Donna? Am I Tanya? So or, oh, Sophie. <laughs> yes, I'll go for Sophie. I can, I can, like... Dance around in a one piece on the beach like she does. Yeah, on the first one. Yeah, we'll go, Sophie. I'll have yeah. Greece too, and then I'll be following it with Mamma Mia as Neil King Just in the, the lead role. Please, <laughs> thanking you. Ten pound a ticket. Well, <laughs> we thought we knew you quite well, Neil, but clearly we, we now know you an awful lot better. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right then. With that, we're going to bring episode 24 I think, I think to a close. We should. <laughs> no more surprises, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks once again then to Tim and Michelle from the Peel Looney Pants. And uh, remember, you can get your tickets now from the Peel Centenary Centre website for their production of Cinderella on the 4th and 5th of June. And also to Chloe and Michelle of Hello Little People for joining us in the studio. Woohoo! Ooh, the twits. Get your tickets now for the twits. The twits. The twits. The twits. The twits. If we can find a gap in their busy rehearsal schedule, we'll be trying to get to quick chat with the National Theatre Connections Isle of Man team and Parker Snell before their upcoming productions. Remember to like and follow our Facebook and Instagram pages to get notifications of upcoming episodes and events. Don't forget to check out our Spotify playlist by searching for Manx Theatre Podcast under Playlist on Spotify. I think I put a Grease 2 one in there, did I? I think so, yeah. If not, I'm going to put one in now. Get that in now, yeah. If you've got any events you'd like us to talk about or promote in a future episode, you can contact us through our social media accounts or by email to manxtheatrepodcast at gmail.com. All that remains is for us to say thanks for listening and we hope you join us again next time on the Manx Theatre Podcast. I've been Neil Callan. And I've been Neil King. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. The twits, the twits, the twits, the twits. The Manx Theatre Podcast, taking a look behind the scenes of Manx Theatre. Men actors' life for me.